Yo guys, what's going on? You're watching JavaScript for Beginners Lesson 12 and in this video we're going to take a look at if statements and control flow. Alright then, so control flow and logic and if statements are a big part of your everyday life. It doesn't have to just be in code and here are a couple of examples of that, right? If you pay for your train ticket, then you won't get a fine. If you take a crap in public, you'll wind up in prison. All right, simple as that. So you're seeing these if statements really in real life, wherever you go. It's just that they're not associated with code. It's just common logic. If you do something, you'll get a specific result. And JavaScript is exactly the same. We use these things called if statements to check whether certain conditions are met. If those conditions are met, then we'll execute a portion of code. If they're not met, we'll execute a different portion of code, right? A good example of this would be if you have an image gallery. If you click on a thumbnail, then we'll show a big image. If you click on the cross of that big image, then we'll shrink that image. This is all conditional statements in action. So we're gonna jump right back into the code now and take a look at these if statements in more detail. All right then guys, so I'm back here in brackets for this lesson and uh, I've just got this blank HTML document here. There's nothing in the body except for this script tag right here where I'm linking up the test.js file and that, my friends, is right here completely empty. I've also got this browser open on the right which is the web page, this index.html, so we're going to refresh this as we write code. Okay then, so in the last lesson we looked at booleans and we said we could assign variables a true or false value and that different expressions evaluate as true or false. For example, 7 is greater than 5, okay? So we're going to take a look at those and we're going to use if statements to evaluate these expressions. So first of all, I'm going to say var um, you like meat equals true. All right, so we're saying, yeah, okay, you like me. We're giving that a true value. And we're going to write an if statement. And an if statement checks whether certain values or expressions are true and executes a portion of code if they are true. And perhaps if you want to, a different portion of code if they're not true. Okay, so the way we do this is by first writing the keyword if. All right, that's a keyword in JavaScript. And it's used to write the if statement. And then after the if, you can do a space. You don't have to. Uh, you can keep it like this if you like. I always put a space for readability. And then we open and close our parentheses. And then within these parentheses is where we put the expression which we want to evaluate. Okay, so if this expression is true, then it's going to execute a certain portion of code. So we'll put in here, uh, you like meat. So essentially what we're doing there is checking the value of this variable, and it's true. So I suppose we could just write true, and that's the same, okay? Because these are the same values. We've assigned you like me the value of true. So this is going to evaluate as true, okay? So after the brackets, we put the curly braces, and this is where we put the code that we want to execute if this condition here is true. All right, so this is called a code block. Anything between these two color braces is the code block that we're going to execute. So it's going to evaluate this statement here. If it's true, then we execute the code within the code block. I'm just going to do an indent here. This is what we do in JavaScript. We indent our code as it goes deeper into different code blocks. And I'm going to write something to the document. So I'm going to say document.write. Then within the parentheses, I'm going to put um, here is the meaty menu. All right. So, and I'm going to put the semicolon right at the end. So, we're saying here, you like me equals true. We've assigned that variable the value of true. Then we're checking this variable to see if it is true. If it's true, then we're going to execute this block of code. If it's not true, then we're not going to execute this block of code. Okay, so we'll save that and let's refresh this browser window. And you can see it's printed out this string because it is true after all. If we change this to false, then this right here is going to evaluate to false and hopefully it won't print. So I'll save that and refresh and there we go, it doesn't print. Okay, so that's simple enough. And we can also evaluate different expressions like we did in the previous tutorial in these brackets here. So we could say if seven is greater than five, then write out this expression is true. Okay, and we know this to be true. We know that seven is greater than five, but let's just check it anyway. Yeah, this expression is true. If I change this to a less than symbol, we're saying is seven less than five and evaluate that. Oops, we need to save it first. Evaluate that, then it doesn't print out this. Okay, so let's make another variable. Let's say there my null. And let's equal this to 10, all right? Semicolon at the end. 
and let's say is my num greater than 10 and then we'll put here uh, my num is greater than 10 so if my num is greater than 10 then it will print out this line here so let's save it and refresh and it doesn't print anything out that's because our number is 10 and 10 is not greater than 10 however if we put 9 there and save it then it does print out because my number is greater than 10 okay likewise we can use the equal sign and remember when we evaluate an expression to see the equality of two things we don't use one equals because that's the assignment operator that we use to assign numbers or values to variables we use the double equal sign because then this compares the two values all right so uh, we'll put in here is equal to 10. So we're saying if my num equals 10, then write in the document my num is equal to 10. So let's save that. And yep, yeah, my num is equal to 10. Let's change this now to 8. And hopefully this shouldn't equate to true, so this won't write out. So let's refresh. And there we go. Cool. So that's how we do if statements. Now, there is other portions to this. We can write else right here. At the end of the if statements, we can write else and then another code block. And essentially what we're saying here is, go ahead and execute this. If this is true, then do this portion, this code block, okay? Execute all this. If this is not true, then move on to the else statement. We're saying, if this is true, do this. Else, if not, do this, okay? So we'll write out here, document.write my num is not equal to 10. And then we'll put our semicolon at the end. Okay, makes sense? So my num is 8, so it'll come here hopefully. Evaluate this, find out that it's not 10, so it doesn't execute this. So it goes to the else statement and it executes this. Okay, so let's save that and refresh. And you'll see here it prints out my num is not equal to 10. If we change my num to 10 again, then refresh. Then it prints out my num is equal to 10, which is this one, because this evaluates the true, and it doesn't have to do the else statement here. All right, so we can do the same with meat. You like meat. Okay, so if you like meat is true, we'll write out you like meat. Okay, if it's not true, we'll go to this else statement and we'll write out you hate meat. All right, so let's save that and see what happens. Refresh, you hate me. And that's because this is set to false. So it's evaluating false here. Doesn't execute this code block, but it goes to the else statement and it executes this one. So let's change this to true finally, just to see the outcome. And hopefully this should evaluate to true and write out this message here. So we'll save that and refresh. And there we go, guys, you like me. All right, guys, so that just about covers it for the if else statement. Uh, there is an extension to this statement called the else if, and we're going to take a look at that right in the next video. Until then, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below. I'll answer all of those. Otherwise, if you enjoyed these videos, please like, share, or subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.